So welcome to the latest episode of Gallifrey Point Radio, where we are uh, getting the chance to in, uh, interview uh, John Ainsworth, part of uh, Big Finish Audio Productions. Um, I am your host, David Bishop. This is Angela, or Angela Pritchett. Sorry, say your name. Angela. I'm a little nervous. It's fine. I'm Angela Pritchett. <laughs> and we're joined by... John Ainsworth. Awesome. awesome. Big... So first... I just want to congratulate you guys on uh, your announcement that you made today about continuing the license of Doctor Who. Yes, that's great news, isn't it? Yes, 2016, December 2016. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, um, question, were you a fan of Doctor Who uh, growing up? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, it's my earliest memories, really. Um, my mother tells me that I used to watch the Batman TV series. I have no recollection of that, but apparently one of my first words was Batman. Um, but I think, sure, I think from that time I must have been watching Doctor Who as well, because my parents watched it. You know, they, they were watching William Hartnell. Um, I was born in between two episodes of the chase. So I think I was just on the set Doctor Who was on Saturday night, so I can't have not watch it. Really. I think my earliest memory is when I was two years old. Wow, that, that's, that's really, really, really awesome. <laughs> Um, who was your first doctor? The first doctor that I can really remember is, is back in Dragon. Um, when I say take at least, that kid, I can certainly remember bits of the mind robber, uh, invasion, space pirates. Space pirates is the only thing I can remember. It doesn't make sense. You cannot watch them. But John Pertry onwards, I really sort of remember it. Um, yeah, and I just never stopped watching. Well, um, so how did you get involved in Big Finish? Well, uh, the long shot. Um, basically, there was a group of us in the 1980s who started producing audio of Doctor Who ourselves for fun. Um, well, at least on the Most people were um, producing fanzines, you know, printing their own magazines, but um, this group of us called Audio Visuals, which was started by a guy called Bill Brown. He wanted to do his own uh, Doctor Who drama, and so that that that, that long period of time, um, I wasn't straight away, but eventually I did the direction and for the final season of plays that we did. Um, I I looked up at the, the money side and the producer side really to some extent, but that was all for fun. Nobody made any money, out of it. and we all thought wouldn't it be great with David to do it. Um, Several years later, uh, that basically happened. Um, Jason Hay Gallery, who runs Big Finish, he, he uh, set up Big Finish to do audio drama. Initially, he got rights to Summerfield uh, as audio dramas. Uh, and then the Doctor Who license came our way. So that's how it started. I, I wasn't involved in Big Finish straight away. Um, I thought to have gone off and done other things. But it was when I basically, when I did a direct to the stage play. Which Jason and Nick Lewis and Gary Russell, uh, everyone from the finish came to see, and uh, obviously liked what they, they saw that I'd done. And Jason said, You must direct some stuff for us. And so uh, I did. And um, that's over uh, 10 years ago. Wow. Well, um, I know you've done, um, I saw that you've, you've, you've directed, you've produced, and you've done voice acting for them. What's your favorite thing to do um, when it comes to videos? <laughs> well, the voice acting is. A little bit. I mean, it, it's usually because I'm involved. Uh, I'm directing it, so I do a little, a little bit as well. Um, I wouldn't consider myself really an actor. Uh, though that's acting is what led me to directing in the first place, because I realised I enjoy directing far more than uh, uh, acting. So, I mean, the two things blur to me. I mean, directing and working scripts, you know, sort of script editing side, I sort of see them. There's a connection between the two, really. I mean, certainly what I'm doing at the moment, the Destiny of the Doctor. I'm effectively working with a script editor, and then the script is completed, they give it into the studio and direct, and it's really one big, one big production, really. Um, I love both sides of it, really. That's really cool. Um, since you do directing, do you help cho choose the voice actors? That yeah, well, most of, most of the time, a director will cast the production. I mean, obviously, you inherit um, the regular cast, the, the doctor to come back. Um, obviously, they already have the. Um, and the way Big Finish works, 
Well, say you were asked to invite him to direct it, as we did a production of not particularly a from companion. But as far as the rest of the characters, it is uh, 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 But sometimes you think, hey, I'm looking for this type of character, this type of character. Yeah. And you get recommendations from other people. Uh, so I have to ask, what's it, I mean, I've had the chance to meet like Peter and uh, Sylvester McCoy and Sophie Aldridge. What's it like working with them um, and directing them in, in the audios? It's great. I mean, they're all, they're all different people. They all have these sort of different uh, approaches to start, to start. I mean, the weird thing is, it's only after or and before to some extent uh, you're in the studio and you think, oh my goodness, that's Peter Davison or Mr. Slayton, you know. That's when the sort of the Doctor Who fan bit kicks in. But when you're actually in the studio, you're just thinking about the job and their actors and you're getting on with it, really. So you don't get, don't get any sort of fan excited. But certainly afterwards, you think, my goodness, you know, look who I've just been working with. Isn't that amazing? You know? um, yeah, they're all great. I've, never, I've rarely had a bad experience of this kind of stuff. So I've rarely had so much. Um, how long does it normally take to produce an audio for Big Finish? Uh, it can vary. I mean, the actual studio recording is the shortest bit of it, really. Um, at most, you would be in the studio for two consecutive days to one production. That is a double CD. Basically, it's one CD, it's one studio in a day of recording. But of course, it's all that on the script, um, which can take a long time. There's several drums um, before, it's, uh, before we are happy. See, have to approve it. Um, and then after you've been excused and recorded it, you then get off the music done. And um, for a CD, that can take between six weeks and two months, really. So, uh, you know, there's most of the production which go to the beginning of the trip to actually be the finished seats. So um, you actually brought up an, an interesting question. I, a question I had is um, with the BBC, do they approve it before you actually record it? I mean, do you give them the script they approve before you record, or do you record so they can actually hear the audio? Um, both now. Um, certainly, they see the, the initial storyline and, uh, and the script. Um, really, the main reason for doing that is to make sure it's not duplicating something they've already got. Um, do you, or do you have a particular uh, favorite audio that you've worked on so far? And if you would be on Doctor Who, because I know the big finish is more than Doctor Who. Um, but do you have a particular one that you've worked on so far? Well, I've done a lot. I, will, I actually calculated the other day. About 60 audio. Um, wow. Um, I guess there's there's a few that sort of really stand. I mean, I'm particularly well. I'm particularly pleased with producing the Doctor Who Dying Sixties, and in particular, I'm very happy with having all the bits and Jeffrey Bell's story. And I direct that one. And more recently, the Crime Trilogy, the original Crime Trilogy, and there's been several other kind of things that are bringing back Crime and putting her in the TARDIS with the Seventh Doctor. That was great. Um, the scripts were really strong. Tracy Childs were excellent to work with. The Sylvester was really good on that one as well. So, yeah. Uh, Judge Dredd, I did that. One of the other things I did that. But I did a series of Dredd movies. And they were great fun to work on. And Toby Longworth was... Uh, I could go on and on. They're all great, really. <laughs> so let's get to Destiny of the Doctor. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed all the way through part six so far um, of the story. I mean, I am thoroughly engaged and hooked, and I can't see, wait to see where the story takes us. Um, but I mean, this is such a massive project. How, how did you get chosen for to be the uh, director of this? Um, well, that's quite interesting. Story. I mean, I, I sort of moved away from Big Finish a few years ago, I wasn't doing quite as much of them. And one of the things I was doing outside of Big Finish was working on audio code. 
Involved with the first audience that finished the deal with the 9th, 10th, and 11th doctors. Can, can you hear us? Uh, yes, you just cut out a little bit at that point. Okay. okay. Um, how does it feel to be involved with the first audience that Big Finish is doing that deals with the 9th, 10th, and 11th doctors? Yeah, that's very exciting. Um, as you say, yes, it's the first for Big Finish. Um, but I think it's been recorded in the air, so I can't tell you too much about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, but, uh, I mean, obviously we do that. So they were coming, um, and we were very excited to be doing it. I mean, the whole the whole thing about the Destiny of Docs is, is what is, we want each title to be quite authentic to the era. So, other prize than I can tell you, I don't know what So, hopefully, I'll keep up with the way that the FSC is going to be done. Yes, but it's a first. I'm looking forward to that. It's all being well. I should be directing the and the this is coming weekend. Well, so um, when was it decided to have the companion sell the story instead of like getting the doctors in there? Because I was well, that list. So say again. The last bit. Um, that was, that was the, first thing, the first thing I really noticed is you, you have a companion and another actor, but you don't actually have any of the, the doctors playing the doctor or narrating the story. Um, well, we, we did talk about that at the beginning. At the beginning. Um, I think something if we wanted to do was have a sort of consistency throughout the whole series. And of course, we can't have William Hartnell. Yeah. And there was no guarantee that we'd be able to get this breakfast and um, but we felt fairly confident that we could get companion actors to, to do it. Um, it. But even that wasn't certain, so I mean, that's one of the reasons why these titles are written in the third person. Uh, so it wasn't where we could get the right to make the story. Uh, the story. Um, however, for the most part, we have. Um, and I think it gives it a nice sort of consistency of tone, and you know, and you do get to sort of. I think a lot of doctors, particularly these days, it is more told from the companion's point of view. It's about their experience. You really want too much insight into the doctor's mind. So, um, okay, we're getting feedback. One second. Okay. Okay. Our feedback's gone. Sorry about that. Is my feedback from my mic? Um, I don't know where it was coming from, but it's in, it's gone now. So I gotta say, so far my favorite part has has to be the Davison, um, the Fifth Doctor, because I mean we get Harry Houdini, we get the Master, you know, we get all sorts of great things that make up Davison's era. Um, so far, do you have a favorite part to Destiny of the Doctor that you can actually, you know, tell us about? Is there a certain one between one and six that you really like, that you're really proud of? What, particular story? Yeah. I'm, just, I'm pretty pleased with all of them. I think they've all been that I know that's not a fair answer, but um, I think they've all worked quite like, well. Um, I mean, uh, I think Babel Sphere perhaps is particularly successful. Because that was a real I asked uh, Jonathan Lloyd, I deliberately wanted to be set in that season 17, um, which is quite sort of unique in Tony's and I, and I said to, to, to Johnny, 
giving it back to Saddam and stuff. And he really did do that, you know, and so I think that that could keep him playing well. But they all have. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any aspect of thinking, oh gosh, I wish we'd done something different to that, could have been better. I mean, you know, I, I, it's actually been a very strong, consistent run, and I think will continue to be right to the end. Well, I'm looking forward to the trip you take us on because I'm, I'm really excited so far. <laughs> yeah. Did you help come up with the overall story of the two doctors? Yes, um, it was um, mainly devised by myself and Michael Stevens. Michael Stevens is the doctor who's very much to go. Excuse me, and Nick Griggs finished, he also contributed um, as well. Um, but it was quite tricky coming up with it because we, I think we decided we would, did want some kind of link in the story arc to it, but we didn't want it to be so complicated that you had to listen to every single story in order. And more importantly, we didn't want the eleven doctors to be trying to these ends and ask the questions. The, the idea is that someone could still pick up the eleven doctor story having not heard the previous ten and still enjoy it as a story of its own, even though it does give of the whole thing. So it was really quite tricky to find that balance. Um, and I, I think it was what came up with the idea of the 11th doctors and the messages for the successes. Um, and people like that, and we, and we ran with that. So you know, hopefully it was working as well as we could be. Um, so because we now know about John Hurt as a doctor and Matt Smith leaving the part, might we see extra parts of Destiny of the Doctor that tie these Doctors in, or are you just not even worrying about these new elements of the Doctor Who mythos? Well, I think it's a little bit late uh, to, to show anything new into Destiny of the Doctor. Um, I mean, as for the future, I mean, I mean, we don't really know yet what John Hurt's place is in the role, but um, yeah, it would be great to do it. Whatever that will ever happen. What projects do you have lined up after Destiny of the Doctor? Uh, well, um, there were a couple of eleven doctors books on audio coming out as people. Um or well, not just twelve doctors now as well, I think when it comes up to the think of it. Um but yeah, there's definitely more types of audio go and I hope to be involved with those. I've got another big finish project which isn't to do with Doctor Who. But that hasn't been announced yet, so I can't believe what it is. I'm afraid, but that that that, that will coming out uh, towards the end of the year. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I can say about that. Um, yeah, that's it, really. That, that, that's all I can say. <laughs> now that you've heard that Matt is leaving the role of the Doctor, what would you like to see out of the next actor to take on the role as the Doctor? Oh goodness! Well. I think taking over the doctor is always difficult, particularly when the first four years was so successful and it really mass in the past. So you have that challenge of being being as good but being different, if you see what I mean. And I think that becomes more and more difficult with each with each regeneration. But they've always done it so far. I think the doctor is always essentially the doctor, and as long as you keep hold of that and don't before the programs. So I sort of have a staple question that I always ask last of, of people that we interview. Um, and this one much static feedback. Okay. We've lost the feedback again. Okay. So this is my this is my sort of staple last question I like to ask, and I really stumped uh, Peter with this one. Um, what is one question that you never can ask, uh, but would like to answer? <laughs> it stumps a lot of people. Uh, I will 
Saya buat bab nokam mungkin. Ya, sorry when I answered. I mean, I I stumped him and he forgot about it. Ron, um, I've only had one person able to actually answer that question. Yeah. Oh, anything else you'd like to ask him? No, thank you so much for letting us interview you. No, well, thank you. I mean, thank you for interested in Destiny's project, but in touch next night. Yeah, I can't wait to see where it takes us. I'm, you know, I'm, I wait each month at the first of the month when I know I could go get the audio download and just continue the journey. Um, it, it can't come quick enough. Oh, good. Well, I, I hope you enjoy the best, and I don't think you'll be disappointed by the ending. I think it's a really exciting conclusion. I, well, honestly, I can't wait to see all the all the pieces of the puzzle come together. I'm I'm I'm, I'm really excited. I mean, I'm I'm trying to figure it out, but I know I'm not coming anywhere close to figuring it out yet. I promise you, if it all fits together, we can make sure nothing gets missed. Oh, I, I have I have total faith that it's it's all going to fit together in the end. Um, <laughs> I would like to thank you again for taking us taking a little bit of time out and talking to us. Um, and hopefully we'll have this out and released later this week because um, this is just really awesome that we got to talk to somebody from Big Finish about uh, the audios because you guys have done a lot to uh, keep the flame going and to give us uh, the adventures of classic doctors, um, even though we might not get them on the TV shows anymore, but you know we still get to hear their wonderful voices, and I think some of them have really had a chance to shine um, thanks to what Big Finish has allowed them to do and maybe see what you guys do. Well, thank you, and thank you for your interest. And uh, you know, we keep. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>